This is a port of power setup. Um, I have a few different tools here. I've got a, um, a pump here for the port of power. So this is a, a small handheld or hand powered hydraulic pump uh, with a reservoir and a, um, this has a small piston in it with check valves. Okay, and then also on this pump, you can see that there is a, um, a valve. So the, the valve is just an open close valve. So when it's closed and then I pump the handle, it's gonna move oil through the hose. And then when I want to release the oil back into the reservoir, um, I just release this hand screw. So port of powers are capable of generating very high pressures. This pump is capable of generating or being rated for uh, use with a jack up to 10,000 PSI. It, they'll say right on them. Um, so how this, I'll give you a quick demonstration of how this works. So when you go to uh, put this together, the first thing you want to look at is the connection. Um, so this fitting is a, is a, a ball valve fitting. And uh, make sure that there's no dirt or, or uh, uh, any kind of damage to the threads and just kind of give it an inspection, give it a wipe and a clean. So I'll kind of give it away with my shirt here. And then this is a uh, 10 ton ram. So this ram has a travel of two and a half inches and uh, it has the female connector. And before you start check to make sure that it has the O-ring installed on the inside, then you will fit this together. And um, you don't need to make the complete fit all the way, but if you push it in, it's gonna wanna try and push the male part out so you got to kind of hold it and get the thread started and then uh, screw that all together and now what we have here is a, a small basic hydraulic system so you want to make sure that this is all done up so on the back side of these rams you'll see that there's a couple threaded holes that so that you can mount it on um, on a piece of steel or in the inside a machine or a press or something and then you also see that you have a, a button here that can actually be threaded out. Um, so yeah, uh, basically to run this, um, I'll just put it on the table there. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tighten up the screw and then I'm gonna just pump this handle. And as you can see, it's a very slow moving piston but it is traveling out. So that'll have two and a half inches of travel all the way out. Now, sometimes these, uh, every time you disconnect and connect these port of powers, uh, the oil inside the reservoir, you slowly lose it. Um, so you have to make sure that you have enough oil in it. And if you do need to fill it up more, with more oil, you can just open up this screw here and then just pour the hydraulic oil right inside. There, make sure that you use clean hydraulic oil. It's not motor oil or something. Um, it has to be hydraulic oil. And so yeah, we're just gonna use some hydraulics to push this up. And this is a very handy tool for, um, you know, lifting or jacking up from the ground. Sometimes you can't grab things from the top to lift up. You have to come in underneath and lift it up to get some rollers or something in underneath. Uh, also, sometimes uh, you have to press pins out or, or any, any place where you need a portable use of a magnification of force, uh, the port of power will work really well. Um, there's a lot of different fittings and attachments for port of powers. This is one that uh, we call a button jack because it's just a small little button. So this would be for where you have not a lot of room to get it in underneath. And this one is rated for four tons. So this will lift 8,000 pounds, this little tiny a button jack so it's quite a large magnification of force and then sometimes there's instances where uh, there's even less room so you can install one of these to uh, it's basically a, a one single acting actuator to uh, make a coupling splitter or um, a wedge actuator this one has a slightly different uh, proprietary fitting on it um, which i won't get into and so yeah so there's a lot of different tools that you can use these porta powers with Okay, here we're looking at a set of uh, pullers uh, that you would use for pulling bearings or couplings or um, 
belt shivs, anything like that, where there's an interference fit and you need to remove a component. Um, so there's a few different types here. Um, <clears throat> the main types of pullers that you'll see would be uh, ones like this, where it's a, a two jaw puller. So these two hooks or arms are gonna reach around and grab onto the back side of, of the um, <clears throat> bearing or, or, or coupling, what have you. And the uh, screw here is gonna go right into the center of the shaft. Um, one point uh, is very important is that when you are gonna use a puller on a shaft, you have to use a button or some kind of a, uh, <clears throat> some kind of a, a point of rotation so that when you're driving it, you're not gonna damage the center of the shaft. So all shafts have a, a machine center in them that machinists, when you go to re, um, if you wanted to uh, do some kind of machining on a shaft after the fact, clean it up or, or remove some damage on it and metalize it or, or something like that, you um, you need to be able to maintain those centers. Uh, so machinists will, will curse you out if you if you bring them a shaft where you, you just put a uh, puller screw right on the end of the shaft. Another type, so that's an external one and it's a two, two jaw. This is an internal one and this is a two jaw as well. So this uh, strong back has a couple of uh, bolts here that are, came with the set. These aren't just uh, regular bolts that you pull off, the, off uh, out of a bolt bin. And then you have an adjustment here to, to, so when you put that inside, then you can adjust in and out uh, to lock it in place. Um, these can be used either with a screw or another option for you to use is, uh, you can use it with a slide hammer. So this is a slide hammer here and they have all different kinds of uh, attachments that go with them. So this one has uh, somebody's made and welded an attachment here. Um, so all of these threads on all of these pullers are all fine thread. And so I'm guessing that this is the right size here. And what you would do with this is you could insert this tool into the center of the bearing. And then this round knob here, you would come in and, and you can actually remove kind of like a hammer. Um, you can remove the, uh, the bearing or whatever component from the, from the inside there like that. So here we have an example of a three jaw puller. Um, these uh, jaws can be moved depending on how much travel or how much length that you need to grab with. And the screw obviously can be retracted all the way or pushed all the way forward. Um, the other neat thing about these three jaws is they can actually be converted to a two jaw. So if you were to remove uh, these two jaws and then you can just bolt one on here, then you can turn it into a two jaw as well. So um, a very versatile tool. Again, if you're going to pull something off, like especially a bearing um, that you plan on reusing, it's a good idea to, um, again, use a button on the center of the shaft and uh, hold the screw steady and then rotate the jaws. That way you're not gonna dent the, the bearing race as you pull it off. But you'll learn more about that when you take uh, bearings later on in the course. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through a little um, step-by-step -step of how I would go about trying to remove a bearing. So here we have a cup and cone bearing on a shaft. Uh, I found it in the shop. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, we're gonna try and pull this bearing off of the shaft. So it's pressed with an interference fit of probably around three or four thousandths of an inch. And um, what I'm, what I'm, applying right now is called a split bearing puller. So these two halves are um, put in behind. You can see there's a little kind of notch where it's going to fit on the shaft. And as I tighten it up here, it um, these fine threaded nuts are, are high tensile grade eight steel. And, um, and then in the side of the split hub bearing, there's a couple of threaded holes where I'm going to attach a couple of uh, high tensile rods to it to pull that bearing off the shaft. So 
So the backside that's up against the bearing here is actually kind of a tapered uh, concave surface. And these threaded rods will actually kind of hold that uh, distance in between the two halves of the of the puller <clears throat> so that when it uh, it's up against the bearing it won't won't try to slide away slide out so if you tighten it too tight um, and you don't there's a kind of a, a, a strange spacer on this bearing I don't know what it's from but if you tighten those two threaded rods up too tight then the puller is actually going to scar and mar the shaft as it gets pulled off. So you want to make sure that it's up in and installed tight, but not uh, clamped, clamping down uh, towards the center of the shaft. You want to make sure that it's going to slide along the shaft. These are the high, high tensile rods. These are um, come with the kit. So these aren't uh, random. Uh, threaded rods that I found. This is all part of uh, a polar assembly. And you see there's flats on it. If you wanted to tighten it down, if you were doing a, a, a bigger a bigger pull on it, but uh, for what I'm doing right now, I'm just gonna thread the rods in. This piece here that I just installed, this is called the strong back. So the strong back is gonna be set up and washered on and threaded on. And that's gonna be what we're gonna be pulling against the, the shaft. Uh, these washers are cast, uh, sorry, forged steel washers that are designed to hold those rods into the center of the strong back. So you see how there's the two tabs with the bent edges there. These washers are specifically made for this. If you just used regular flat washers, it would, um, the strong back would not be centered in there and you'd get kind of an angled pull, which would make it a less efficient. So now the question is, what are we going to use to apply force to pull that bearing off of that shaft with that fit? And the first thing that I would go to is the port of power that we just discussed in the video. Um, the question really though is when you're trying to make something work, it's what, what size, how, how long are the rods, what kind of tools do you have available? Uh, a lot of these kits will have different length rods, they'll have different setups. Um, and for this one, I was just kind of trying to guess and thought, well, maybe that small port of power that I had earlier could be the right size for this. Um, so and as soon as I put it out, I was like, okay, yeah, no, nope. too long, not going to work. I'm going to have to figure out something different. Maybe that button jack that I, that I found earlier would work. So I'm taking off that hydraulic cylinder and we're going to try the button jack. We'll see if the button jack works. So I'm just squaring up the strong back, bringing it in as close as I can. And then when I put the button jack in place, I can see that it's got such a small travel. I thought that I would be able to get enough to at least get it started and maybe pull the bearing off enough that I could switch back to that longer ram that I had. But uh, as it turns out, when I started uh, pumping the hand pump, that it just didn't have enough travel and wasn't gonna work. And that's kind of the name of the game sometimes when you're doing these kinds of jobs. If you don't have a, a proper a proper setup or a proper puller, that's kind of how it goes. So the last option and, and the last way that I can use this puller is just to do it with a screw. So you can see there's a machined hardened point on that screw. And then if you look at the very center of the shaft, you can see the center drill mark. So I'm gonna line this screw up to the center of that shaft and I'm going to put a button on there and I'll see the button in a second. So buttons can be made of brass, they can be made of uh, tool steel. Uh, it's never a bad idea to just put a little bit of oil or grease on the threads which I didn't do here because I didn't think this was going to work necessarily. I was just doing it for demonstration but uh, the you don't want to attempt to drive that point of that 
rod up against the center of the shaft because it's going to score it and, and gall, gall it up. So instead, uh, we have these buttons. So the button is going to actually stay stationary up against the end of the shaft, and then the screw is going to kind of turn inside of the button. And it's never, again, a bad idea to put a little bit of grease or oil in between the screw and the button. And it's also never a bad idea to put, when you're doing any kind of lifting or jacking, to, to lubricate the, the contact surfaces between the nut and the threaded surface itself. So there's like a basically a complete setup. I've got a, a nut and a screw in the middle. I've got the two connecting rods with, uh, with the, the shouldered washers to hold everything centered. And then just by hand, I'm just bringing everything up and making sure kind of making sure that everything is square. It wouldn't be a bad idea to measure things out for your strong back between the two rods and just make sure that the distance of, of the two rods is, is the same. I was kind of eyeballing it based on the uh, shoulder. And so I didn't actually pull out a tape measure measure, but it uh, wouldn't be a bad idea either. So now we'll see if we can get enough pull with this threaded rod. I'm going to adjust a couple of adjustable wrenches. It'd probably be better to, to grab a socket that would fit on the end, um, but uh, you'd need a, a 12 point to fit on a squared off end. Um, I grabbed a nice big 15 inch combination wrench or adjustable wrench, but it, for the actual torquing of this, it would be much better to use a, an open end wrench. So I'm giving it a pretty good pull. And what I'm looking for at this point is for the bearing to kind of pop, like something to, to release and the bearing to actually kind of jump. But I can tell that this bearing at this point is not going to move it's it's on there pretty good i don't know when the last time it was removed so um i'm gonna have to escalate things here So I put this part of the video here just to let you see me disassemble this setup, just to kind of implant it in your minds a little bit more what, what it looks like putting it together and, and taking it apart and the steps that, that uh, it takes to do that.
So this is the Escalation. This is our 60 ton press in our shop. So I'm just gonna kind of walk through um, what I'm gonna do. Right now what I'm looking at is the platen, looking to see the condition of the press plates that are in there. These are the plates that go across the platen in the press. The platen is the lower two pieces of channel that actually slide up and down on the column. You can see that there's a couple of pins that hold it up, which I'll, I'll show you how to adjust that coming up in a second. So the first thing, and then I'd also like to point out that you can see underneath that there's a big piece of rubber there. So when I press the shaft through the bearing, um, that will, it will land on that rubber and protect it from hitting the ground, protect the ground, protect the shaft, uh, just kind of a landing pad for the, for the part. So I was kind of eyeing up and looking at it and there's a hand winch on the side. So I'm lifting up the platen, locking it in position, and then I'm going to drop the pins one full length <clears throat> down so that when I lower the platen, I can be able to fit the shaft in. So you see that I can lower this platen all the way down to the ground if I want to. Um, depending on what I'm what I'm pressing. So now I'm gonna release the locking mechanism and I'm lowering down the shaft and it's gonna come down about, I think it's about 12 inches. What I'm looking to make sure is that I've got the pins properly placed and that the platen is sitting down on it. So I'm looking backside, I'm looking, making sure Okay, yeah, everything looks good. And then I also wanna make sure that I've lowered the winch down far enough that the platen is not being held up by the, by the winch that I was moving it with. So I wanna make sure that that's all set up. Now I'm gonna place the shaft inside within the press blocks and line it up to the center of the hydraulic shaft uh, as it comes down. You see we have a steel cage that goes around it. That steel cage has to be closed when you do any kind of press um, because things can break and shatter and you wanna make sure that it's not gonna fly out and hit, hit somebody innocent walking past. Also, you never wanna press anything with a piece of brass. It Brass is soft, so a lot of times you think that it would be good, but brass under high compression actually becomes extremely brittle and, and can shatter and um, is quite dangerous. So you don't want to use that. So on the right here, what I'm doing here is there's a, a hydraulic valve. So I, I've closed the valve and then I'm going to start pumping the uh, oil to the cylinder to drop the piston there, that cylinder piston down to um, line up with the edge of the shaft. So there's two speeds with this pump. There's kind of a slow speed and a fast speed. I hadn't used this press before, so I figured that out as I went. But um, if you pull the hand lever up and to the right, it actually has a much faster speed than what I'm moving at right now. So I've just about made contact, so I'm just going to kind of look at this and line it up the best that I can. I've kind of zoomed in here so that you can see that the piston is coming down in behind the uh, guard. And you'll see that the, uh, the shaft is going to start pressing through. So even though this press is good for about 60 tons, I was probably only using uh, two or three tons of, of force when, I'm, when I was removing this bearing. And you can see it just made a big pop there and um, jumped down and now I'm gonna catch up and I'm just gonna press it out the rest of the way. You'll see that it actually will just drop through at some point into that rubber mat that I talked about and pointed out before.
and there it goes. So I'm releasing the pressure and you can see the hydraulic ram raising back up and then I'll open up the cage and I'll remove the bearing and the collar that was in behind it that I used to press off the bearing. And then I'll grab the shaft that's sitting on the piece of rubber. There's our shaft. That's what you can see where the bearing was, was located on it. So now we're going to put the shaft in this, in this uh, vise and protect it a little bit. So I put an oil absorbent rag around it, but you can see where the bearing was located on the shaft. That rusty dark color is, is where it was. So this is a pattern that we would call fretting. And fretting is the slow movement and creep of the bearing around the shaft as it rotates and it kind of just slowly wears away and produces kind of a fine dust that uh, corrodes and um, so we're going to have to clean this up the best that we can. The best way to clean that up is um, to get an abrasive cloth of some sort. So we have a few here. We have some sandpaper, some wet sanding paper. That's more of an automotive thing that would be 120 grit. So I usually don't go for wet sanding sandpaper. Instead, I would go for something that was more um, of a emery cloth of some sort. So here we have a few different emery cloths. We have a kind of a more coarse grit and a finer grit of emery cloth. And then we have this one, which is a sand cloth. Now this one is usually used for copper tubing and soldering and things like that. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, this coarse emery cloth. I'll start with the coarse one and then we'll go to the finer one uh, a little bit later on. So there's different types of damage that can happen to a shaft that you might have to buff out. This is fretting. Sometimes it can be just straight damage from um, maybe somebody hammering or something has collided with the shaft where there's a dent which displaces the metal outwards. Um, so I'm giving it a first couple, few, first few buffs here so that I can see where the bigger score marks are. And then from there, I'm looking to see if there's anything that's sticking out above the, the intended diameter of the shaft. So if there was some metal that had been dented, that metal kind of flows outwards and, uh, and creates a, a place where if I was to reinstall a new bearing on the shaft, it's going to get hung up on that, on that uh, displaced metal. So I'm going through and, and cleaning this up the best I can and giving it uh, a rough emery cloth. And then I'm looking for any clues or any signs to any potential damage that might have happened to the shaft. All right, so lastly, we have a, uh, a lapping plate here. Um, this has a cross hatch pattern and you can see it quite worn out. It looks like it was cut. Um, so what you do with these uh, plates is they're, they're made of cast. So cast is quite soft. And then what you do is you brush on some lapping compound. It's kind of like gritty, gritty grease. Um, so that what that uh, compound does is it, is it sits on there and then you get uh, something to charge the stones. So you actually grab uh, something and you, you roll. The idea is that you don't want to slide, you wanna roll. And what that does is there's um, really hard uh, um, garnet or, or abrasive in the grease that actually gets pressed into, into the stone. So after you've done that and you've you charged the stone, 
uh, you would come in with some uh, some solvent and you'd wash away the grease and what that leaves is just the embedded abrasive right in the cast. From that point, what you would do is, you know, if this was the, the item that you wanted to lap, uh, you would come in with, uh, lubricate it with a little bit of kerosene and you would just come in and make little, you know, 40 uh, figure eights or circles or back and forth and lap it depending on what you're trying to do and then eventually you would end up with a very very high finish um, high quality surface finish for um, either sealing or uh, whatever application that you were, you were doing it for so that's uh, that's the lapping 